This is an unrehearsed demonstration of how to make a face cam or disc cam in Inventor. We start with an assembly and we have just a, a basic follow arm type lever here. You do not have to have an assembly. You can produce a cam in any assembly whether you have an assembly feature or not. It can be done freestanding. I am going to place mine on the rotating shaft. So I pick the disc cam from the types in Inventor in the assembly under the design tab. Let me get rid of the existing one so I can begin a new one. I want to build a component. You can also do it just for calculation with no model. I want to build it on this cylindrical face to match my shaft. I'm going to build on top of this design plane and I may have to flip it later. Now the base radius is the diameter, the radius of the cam before you add any lifts or valleys to it. The base radius. The cam width is of course the width of the cam and I'm 5 eighths in this case because my follower is 3 quarters wide. It's a little bit smaller. Now we have the different values for the follower down here. It's a half inch uh, radius follower. It has a width of 3 quarters. Now, the pivot distance, the arm length, and the reaction arm must be put in. They don't have to exist in the model, but if they do, you can use a measurement tool to measure them directly. What you're looking for is these values. You can click on the preview button and find the Y, LR, and LA. So here's the Y, which is a distance between this axis and this axis. So I just hit the measure tool and measure from there there and it plugs it in. The, the arm, I can measure the arm length from there to there. And the last one with the reactionary arm, I can measure from here to there. The values didn't change because this was the last one I produced and I really can't change it very well until I make a brand new one. Now the next thing you need to decide is what kind of cam it's going to be. Inventor gives you quite a bit of uh, range of types of cams. The, one of the most used one is a harmonic sinusoidal. Now what I've got to do is from three, 0 to 360 I need to put in my different cam lifts. So I need to add different cam positions. And I would do it every 45 degrees. So I basically say add before because it's before 360 I get a 180. Now my notice my box is in the 180 range. If I add before I get a 90. Notice my box is inside the 90 and before I get a 45. Now I need one here for, for um, 135. So I put my cursor there and hit add before and it puts a 135 in. Now click over here and add before and I get myself, myself a 270. In this area, add before, I get myself a 225. And then over here, click and say add before. And I've got myself on all 45 degrees all the way through. Now click on the first range and I'm going to say at this position at the end position of this the lift at the end of this 45 degrees I'm going to have a total lift of one inch at 180 so at this point it's going to be a quarter inch so I type in 0.25 and it already knows it's inches it'll fill that in for me pick on the next one and I'm going to have it go up at this point to a half inch. Now if you want to stop and hit calculate, you'll fill the graph in for you. You see I've got a quarter and I got a half. Now I click on this one, I want to go up to three quarters. And if I click calculate, it will automatically build that section. Quarter, half, three quarters, and I want to go one more step in up to 180 of one inch at the end of the lift, at the end. So there's my full 180 degree motion. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dwell in this section at 1 inch. You get to put a dwell in. So I pick on this one and I say at the end of this is still going to be 1. So it will be flat in this particular section. Now I'm going to start my descent down. At this point I'm going to go back to 3 quarters. And I'll go ahead and calculate to show you 3 quarters. In this section I'm going to go down to a half. 
Actually, I need to go a little further. I'm going to go down to 3 8 because I'm running out of space. I go with calculate. And now I'm going to the last one. I'm going to 0. It has to go back to 0. So I've got everything filled in. I've got 8 segments. I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate again. Everything is okay. If there's a problem, we'll give you a box down here. So I say, go ahead and say, okay. It asked me to develop my disk cam and my subassembly. I say, okay, and it generates the cam. That's all there is to it to make the cam. Now let's put the file arm on top of it. That's just simply a tangent constraint will probably work the best. Tangent between this surface and that surface. Now if I move the cam, as you see, it follows it. Now I could go through and put bolts to my shaft and all that, but it's not really part of what you asked, so I'll stop here to keep this length a little bit short. That's it. Very easy. Very straightforward.